All right. So today we have our guest, Jeremy Chisenhall, um, from the Herald. So uh, first off, um, can you spell your name? Uh, yeah, uh, first name Jeremy, J-E-R-E-M-Y. Uh, last name's a little more complicated. Chisenhall, C-H-I-S-E-N-H-A-L-L. Uh, and tell me a little bit about what your position is at the Herald. Yeah, so right now I'm the digital managing editor. Um, I mostly just run the website. Um, I make sure that our stories are getting up in a timely manner. Um, I kind of coordinate how everything looks on our website, uh, you know, what goes on top spot, what goes below that, um, how those sections work online. Um, and then I work a little bit with uh, helping our staff come up with uh, content to put on our website. Um, and I put the uh, print stories on our website as well. Okay. And what has been your, um, still a little bit about your background, where you're from, what you're studying, et cetera? Yeah, so uh, I'm a journalism major. Um, I have been interested in journalism since I got here. I uh, really kind of started with that around my junior year in high school. Uh, I'm from Erlinger, Kentucky. It's a small town uh, about 10 minutes south of Cincinnati. Um, and. That's really, you know, kind of just uh, my background. Um, I've been at the Herald since my first semester of my freshman year. I started as a general assignment sports reporter. Uh, then I was a baseball reporter. Uh, I worked the men's basketball beat, and then I was the sports editor for a couple semesters, and uh, that led me to uh, digital managing editor. And then I will be the editor in chief next fall. Okay. Uh, so it's it was a process of just working your way up the ladder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so what we wanted to specifically sort of talk to you about today was the uh, resignation of Dean Larry Snyder. Um, so first, just tell us how you all at the Herald found out about this. Yeah, so um, his resignation was announced by the provost, Terry Ballman. Uh, that was, I believe, was sent to, in an email to all faculty and staff. We had it forwarded to us. Um, and uh, we started from there, uh, you know, just a, he wrote a story about how he had resigned um, and then we started kind of poking around a little bit because obviously this was sudden, he wasn't announcing it himself, the Board of Regents didn't even, hadn't even been notified yet. Um, so we, uh, we placed some preliminary records requests. Um, those took a while to get back to us, and we were, had already started finding out other information by then. Um, it just it feels like it's been like a month since it started because it's been so much information. Um, I know that kind of the timeline of it, you know, he resigned, uh, I believe, on a Tuesday, and it was going to be effective Wednesday. Uh, students started protesting on Wednesday. Um, I, uh, I uh, placed a records request on uh, emails from Caboni towards the Board of Regents about this, which uh, allowed us to discover kind of that, um, gave us a hint that this wasn't really um, Larry Snyder's choice. You know, in the email he essentially said that uh, Terry Ballman had the freedom to make uh, these kind of decisions when it came to faculty and staff decisions, um, which kind of showed that maybe he was forced out. and. Of course, uh, in uh, forums and interviews and things like that that Terry Ballman has done since then, she's made it pretty clear that um, he was forced out. Um, he was forced to resign. So that's kind of how that developed into us finding out that uh, he didn't just resign under his own accord, and this has kind of been something that's pushed upon him. What were some of the documents that you requested? Uh, so we requested uh, Larry Snyder's mm -hmm. personnel file, um, just to kind of see if there were any like disciplinary actions or anything in there. Um, we've requested emails from Cavoni to the Board of Regents involving this situation. Um, we also requested uh, a correspondence between uh, several members of the administration um, with regards to uh, Larry Snyder and his resignation. Those we weren't able to get back. Um, they, many of them were marked attorney-client privilege. Um, as I'm sure you all have heard, uh, they're not very forthcoming with information that was uh, with regards to personnel matters. Right. Did you get the personnel file? Uh, yes, I'm actually going to pick that up today. Okay. So some of it you could get and some of it you couldn't get. Yeah. yeah. Um, are, are you all going to continue to pursue the, the stuff that you couldn't get? 
Um, yeah, I haven't really had a chance to, I was the one that requested most of that. I haven't really had a chance to talk to our lawyers, but I, I certainly will um, and see what they say about it, whether or not that's information we should be able to get, and if I should push a little harder, if I should just let it go. Okay, okay. Um, so, um, talk a little bit about how the staff at the Herald sort of mobilized to do this. You had a lot of people working on this. How did that work? Yeah, it, it's been a it's been an incredible team effort um, from everyone, especially the news staff. Um, I I don't think we've ever had as many people in the office on a Friday as we did last Friday, um, and we were just all over the place. We uh, we have these two big marker boards in the newsroom, and we just fill them up with places we needed to go, people we needed to call, people we needed to get a hold of. Um, it, it it was like trying to connect all these dots, um, and. We, uh, so we were all in the newsroom and we essentially just said, well, we just need to go out and find these people. So we had reporters and editors that were trying to, you know, canvas every conference room they could find to see if there were meetings happening. Um, we were going to all the, you know, we were going to all the offices of university senate members, of department heads of Potter College to see if they would talk to us um, or to see if they were meeting together. Um, we went to the provost's office. We tried to get a hold of Larry Snyder. Um, it was really just anyone that was available, you know, they were kind of boots on the ground. We were right. getting them out and uh, getting them to go and report and find people and find out what was going on. Okay. So as you're doing this, what is, what is the reaction that you're getting from this, these people that you're going out and trying to get information from? Uh, unfortunately, most of them, it's a I'm not going to talk situation right. um, because, and you know, we could we could kind of understand that. We understand that it is a sensitive situation. There's a lot of people that um, seem to really be a little bit, um, you know, a little bit shy and afraid of you know what will happen if, if they really speak out on this. Um, it took a lot of work. There were several people that we had to talk to several times to get them to go on the record to get to get them to give us background information. Um, luckily for us, that, that did work out eventually. We got some pretty important members of the faculty to actually say on record that um, they knew for sure that Larry Snyder was forced to resign. Um, they didn't have a choice. And then they also gave us some really good information about just how the faculty feels about, you know, if they speak out, what's going right, to happen right, to them. Right. When, you're, when people are reluctant to talk to you, how do you, as a journalist, how do you approach that and try to get them to, to be comfortable enough to talk to you? Yeah, I think there's two ways. Um, the first way, which I think if you don't necessarily have uh, people skills, uh, maybe it's a little bit easier, which is to go the public records route and try right. to find as much as you can via public record. Um, the other way is to just be persistent. Um, if you uh, talk to a person enough, if you can convince them that you're not trying to just invade their privacy or just get them to talk for your story, you know, you really uh, understand that um, they have something to say and it probably is best that it's known by the public, uh, you'll be able to get through to them eventually and they'll understand um, why they should talk or why you want them to talk. Okay. And um, did, you, did you run into a lot a situation where you had people who were sort of willing to, to tell you things but not for publication? In other words, they wanted to chat with you but they just didn't want you to use anything they were chatting about. Yeah, we had, I think we had a couple reporters that ran into that situation. For the most part, um, they just wouldn't say anything, but there were a couple people that, you know, they said that they wanted to go off the record. Um, I believe, you know, I won't name any names, but I believe we had someone in the Dean's Council that did that and a faculty member that did that. And you were willing to do that? Or so, I guess, how did you make the decision about whether we will let them go off the record or not? How did you sort of navigate that? Well, it wasn't uh, me personally that was right. interviewing them, but we decided, especially because uh, one of those was really early on in the situation, we decided we'll take whatever information we okay. can get. If we can't publish it, at least it will allow us to pursue some other right. routes. So you would err on the side of getting the information even if you couldn't use it, rather than to say, if you don't go on the record, we're not going to have this conversation. Yes. Okay, all right. Um, so, um, I, I, don't, I, I don't want to uh, interrupt anything, but uh, Terry Bauman is resigning. <laughs> oh, Lord. All right. Wow, that's interesting. Big news. Yeah. In the middle of class. I, I texted uh, our group and said, you know, 
keep your guys' ears open because we we were wondering if this was going to happen, and I was like, I'll be unavailable for All right, well, I'll, I'll try to get you out of here as soon as possible, and I have a feeling Evan is not going to materialize at 11.50.25. Um, so talk a bit, little bit about what it was like to sort of be on the inside of this, trying to this big thing's happening on campus, all the students are interested, the faculty's interested, and you're kind of on the inside of it. Sort of explain a little bit about how that experience was. Um, it's, it's a lot of chaos, I think. Um, like I mentioned earlier, you know, we're going in a lot of different directions, we're trying to find out as many things as we can. Um, I think one of the most important things was um, to stay balanced in your coverage because, a lot, like you said, a lot of people are interested in this, but um, the general consensus, you know, outside of our newsroom was that Terry Ballman was at fault here, um, and you know this the way this situation has played out, especially now, you know, with her apparently stepping down. Right. Um, it certainly played out that way, but we had to make sure that we we stayed balanced and we didn't kind of play into what um, our readers kind of had already assumed. Right. Um, so we had to kind of keep that outside opinion out um, and just remain balanced in our coverage. Okay. Um, you know, when you're all doing this, you probably had a lot of rumors that were sort of coming across your your door over there. Yeah. How did you sort of sift out the rumors from the facts or the things that could be verified? Um, we just had to make sure that we, we took everything that we heard with a grain of salt, and if it even sounded feasible, we had to check it out as thoroughly as we could. Uh, we were getting anonymous tips from random Gmail accounts, and we couldn't tell, you know, what was accurate right. and what wasn't. Um, but we did, you know, we were thorough with most of what we got, and we didn't report it. We just um, talked to people that would know the facts. Um, and if it wasn't, if it wasn't true, we ignored it. If it was, we reported on it. Okay. What would you say was the were some of the biggest hurdles that you all had to, in reporting the story? I think the biggest thing would be getting people to talk on the record. Um, that took a while, it took a lot of effort, um, and 